Hey guys, how y'all doing? Today I'm going to do a video on my background. It was brought to my attention that doing gun content was awesome. However, if you guys don't know who I am and have any idea that I know anything in the world about guns, that's probably not a good idea. So we're going to go through some of my background, some of my firearms experience, so on. And just do a quick rundown of who I am and why I'm doing any of this to begin with. So, let's get started. So, first things first, name is Opie. No, not my real name. Name I got from doing the gun training is a nickname. Stuck with me and I kind of ran with it. So, that's the name I go by. That's the name I hear me call myself as. Short and simple, it works. 27 years old, from the southern Indiana area born and raised, and I have a degree in product design and production processes that I went to a two-year school to get, technical school. And as far as my shooting goes, it all started here where I grew up. And I've been shooting since I was five when dad put a gun in my hand. So it's always been around, it's always been a thing. I've never been, or grow, either growing up, I wasn't very hyper aware of it and how important it was, but I was always doing it, it was always around. As far as my firearms experience goes and background beyond growing up with guns, I started training around 21, 22 years old after I got out of college and got my job. and. In that time, I've taken Vehicle Elements Theory with Chris Costa, I've taken TAPS with Pat McNamara from T-Max, and I've taken Rifle One with John Lovell. In addition to all of that, where I started at was training with Chris Bondi from Regular Guy Training. Smaller company, not like the other names, but you might recognize it. And I've done virtually all of his classes, at least, no, virtually all of his classes, minus maybe one or two new ones. And in addition to that, I got to a point with him where he actually offered me to help travel around and help teach him, help him teach classes and help him assist in running courses for other guys. So I got to meet a lot of cool guys that way. That's how I got to meet the guys that took me to uh, Chris Costa's class, that's how I met some of the guys I went to level with, and that's kind of where I got my start. But since then I've, you know, done my own thing, and all that comes without any military or any police background. I have none of that whatsoever. Uh, in addition to that, though, I have taken a medical class with Omega Solutions, maybe it's Omega Tactical Solutions, I can't quite remember as a medical class for trauma, so not just a first aid class, it's a trauma medicine class. as a one day thing, went to Ohio for that, but that's the only non-firearms specific class that I've taken that still ties into the sphere of firearms training as it pertains to fighting and self-defense. Now to go with all of that, there's the why. Why am I doing any of this? I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it to become somebody important. That's never going to happen. There's already plenty of guys doing that that are legends of the industry or really well-known guys and even small companies they are doing a ton of fantastic work. And I'm never going to be on the par with them and that's okay. However, in training with these guys, I've realized there's never going to be enough of them to hit every person that needs this information. And in my opinion, that's everyone who values freedom and values the ability to protect themselves and their families from other people. I don't care if you're the biggest dude in the gym or if you're a little lady that lives next door. If you have a gun, you're just as lethal as the other person given you have the right experience and the right skills to use what you have. And it's, you've heard before, it's the equalizer. That's what guns are. They're the great equalizer that puts everyone on the same playing field. And that's really powerful. It's really important. 
And like I said, I've grown up shooting guns, but it was really the end of high school, uh, my senior year, that I got to, I really saw for the first time ever how important any of this is. Not just, you know, using guns and having them, but the, the importance of being able to keep that freedom. Because that's always being tugged at or gnawed at. They want to be gone and gotten rid of. And that's a big thing. What kind of open my eyes to begin with? They want to take it away. Why do they want to do that? Well, it's not for any good reason. However, that's kind of why this is even beginning. That's why after I got out of college and had an income of my own that I could afford it, I started training and doing classes. That's the reason it all started. And going through more and more classes, I realized that everyone that values those things needs this information. And they may not need all of it. They may not need to be the guy out there or the girl out there that's rocking a night vision set up with a $3,000 AR. But if they have a gun, they need to know a sliver of the sphere that is firearms training to protect themselves and to be safe with what they have. It's important that they need it, but there will never be enough instructors out there to do the job. It will never happen. You can kind of get around that with putting your content online and hitting more people and reaching a wider audience. But even then, it doesn't beat having someone there watching you, pointing out what you do right and what you do wrong. It's a very big difference. Now, granted, the self-motivated people of us out there will go out and seek the information online, do our own training, and get to that level. And that's great. If you can do that, save the money and do that. Take a couple classes and save the rest of your money for your own personal ammo to train with and your own personal gear to have ready for whatever you're expecting to happen. Now, that's, that was the, the tipping point. And then that led to taking my first class at 21, 22 years old. And that led to traveling around the world, not the world, traveling around the country within reason, to do these classes, to get the information or to help pass it along where I was able to. And a lot of that came out of my own pocket, rather all of it did. I never got paid to do any of that. I was paying to go take classes. I was still part of the membership program to help train and be an assistant instructor while I was doing it. So that's how important this really is to me. And that's the pivotal part of why I'm doing any of this to begin with. Now, at this point of my firearms career, I am to a point now where I'm confident teaching other people on my own. There's information I have that people don't that I can effectively communicate to teach them something they never knew. So with that being said, with any luck in the near future, Grindstone Training will become an actual LLC and I will actually begin offering private lessons for individuals. And this is gonna be a slow process. I'll probably post on my Instagram and Facebook both about it. Uh, I try and use Parler and Rumble and Full30, but I'm more on Facebook and Instagram because that's where most people seem to be so far following what I'm doing. But I'm going to offer this in the form of a post publicly. Say, hey, I'm doing private lessons. If you're interested, message me directly. And I'll reach out to people that I know that may be interested about this as well. Uh, but that should be coming in the near future with any luck. However, that brings us to the name, Grindstone Training. And this will be the ending note of the video. You hear a lot of names of so-and-so tactical or something tactical solutions or whatever, and that's fine and dandy, cool. That's your name, that's your name. It doesn't really matter. What they do and how well they do it, that's what matters in the end. We all know that. But there's a reason I picked this name, and I want you to know that. It really stems off of the phrase, keep your nose on the grindstone. You may have not heard it, you may have heard it a lot, all it really talks about, all it's really saying is keep your nose on the grindstone. Keep 
training, keep working at it, keep doing the work needed. So someone that has no experience whatsoever that wants to take a class, I can offer them information to develop a foundation, a base skill set that they can work off of. And that's, you know, in the, the grindstone logo, you see a hammer and anvil. That's because like a blacksmith would do, you have to forge a piece. You have to forge that foundation. You have to create that. Beyond that, then you begin to shape it. And as you begin to shape it, and that relates to what we do, and how do I do this? How do I do a reload? Do I use a slide release? Do I rack it over the top? Both work, which one do I do? Doesn't matter, don't care, get the job done. But that's where you know, okay, this is the gun, this is how it can be reloaded. Which method do I want to use because which one I prefer? You pick that and you shape yourself that way. Once you've got that done, you continue to refine that like any blacksmith would on a piece of work. And at the very end of that process on a blade, you sharpen the edge. That's the grindstones for. Once you have the skill set, you have that edge to work with, you become lethal. Then you have an edge to you. You're not defenseless anymore. You have something to protect yourself with besides a cell phone and praying to God that 911 gets there in time. Keeping your nose on the grindstone means one of two things. Developing a skill set and maintaining it. Go in the range once a month, once a week if you can, once every couple months, that's all you can do. It doesn't matter. You maintain your skill set through range, classes, dry fire, doesn't matter what it is, you maintain what you have already learned and you remain lethal. You remain tuned up to what you can do. And beyond that, you keep your nose on the grindstone and keep working day in and day out to become even better, to become more lethal, to become more proficient at the skills you have chosen to hone in on. So no matter how you want to look at this, that is the whole point between behind grindstone training. You're training day in and day out. You're working on it. And all the while, you're keeping your nose on the grindstone to maintain that at the very least, if not improve it if not to make yourself better by the smallest of margins if you can do that that's what keeping your nose on the grindstone means and that's what grindstone training is all about so guys that's the end of the video if you have any questions about something i didn't say go ahead and ask and i'll fill in the blanks best i can some things i may not answer if it's personal because it really doesn't matter to what i'm doing and what we're here talking about today uh, but with that being said, guys, that's all I've got. So you all enjoy your evening. I'll enjoy mine. And as always, sharpen your skills.